Why can't an ideal filter be implemented in practice? The answer to this question is fairly simple, yet commonly misunderstood or not noted properly. Uh, in this video, we will try to address this question and uh, come up with an engineering answer to this question as to why an ideal filter no, cannot be implemented in practical situations. So let us first uh, recall quickly what a filter is. Filters are systems which allow certain frequencies to pass through them and block certain other frequencies. And throughout the discussion of this video, we will use the example of a low pass filter and uh, come up with an answer as to why an ideal low pass filter cannot be implemented in practice. Similar arguments will apply to other types of filters like a high pass filter or a band pass filter and so on. So let us first uh, look at the frequency response of, of an ideal low pass filter. And we see that the frequency response has a rectangular shape. We call this as a box filter, uh, which is uh, having a frequency response in the shape of a rectangular pulse. So it has a certain cutoff frequency, which we denote as uh, FC. And the range of frequencies which are allowed to pass through this filter are from zero up to FC. And that range of frequency is called as the pass band. And the frequencies above FC, which are blocked by the filter, uh, that, that frequency band is called as the stop band, right? And uh, in practice, however, the frequency response of a filter does not have a vertical cutoff like this. Instead, it has a gradual transition band moving from the pass band towards the stop band. So the uh, the status the state of the filter does not uh, change from pass band to stop band at, at a specific frequency but rather it uh, tapers gradually from the pass band to the stop band okay so that's the distinction between and um, the frequency response of an ideal filter as compared to a uh, practical filters frequency response now uh, a few observations to be made here is that uh, the transition band has an effect on the complexity of the filter and the uh, transition band also uh, uh, implies or uh, has an implication on the quality of the filter itself. So the narrower the transition band, the better the filtering characteristics of the filter. However, uh, the narrower the transition band of the filter, the more complex its implementation becomes and hence its cost as well. So the narrow transition band uh, implies that the implementation cost, uh, implementation complexity and cost of the filter is going to be high. Now with this information at hand, let us now look at what would be the impulse response of a filter whose frequency response is ideal. That is, it, the frequency response is a rectangular shape. Uh, for such a filter, the impulse response is having a sync function shape, okay? The function uh, which represents the impulse response denoted by H of T is nothing but a sync function. And we are going to use this impulse response in trying to answer our question as to why an ideal filter cannot be implemented in practice. The next piece of uh, information we want to understand is the relationship between the frequency response and the impulse response in general. And uh, from our analysis of signals and systems and from the theory of uh, uh, Fourier analysis, we know that the impulse response H of T and the frequency response H of F are a Fourier transform pair. So uh, taking the Fourier transform of the impulse response gives us the frequency response and vice versa. And uh, we clearly see that uh, you know, we have a rectangular pulse shape in the frequency domain here, and the corresponding time domain representation would be a sync function. And uh, this relationship has been explained in a separate video, and uh, you can uh, watch that video uh, for the purposes of that relationship, right? So what we have, uh, uh, what we observe here is that the impulse response is the, uh, and, and the frequency response are a Fourier transform pair. And uh, since we have the uh, impulse response of an ideal filter having the shape of a sync function, uh, we clearly notice that uh, this impulse response is non-causal. 
Now, causality is a condition that is required for any system to be implemented practically. So the impulse response clearly in this case is non-causal. And let us see what causality means and how uh, it impedes the implementation of uh, a system whose impulse response is not causal. So let us try to answer uh, what is the meaning of impulse response for any system. Uh, the, the meaning of impulse response is that the output that the system will produce when the input applied is a unit impulse function, that is a delta function. So when we apply an impulse to the ideal filter, the response that we get is called as the impulse response, which is having the sync function shape. And uh, what we notice here is that the impulse response is non-zero for time t less than zero. So it has a non-zero value uh, for negative values of time. And uh, that means there is a non-zero output in this system that the system is producing uh, before the input is applied. So the input to the system is being applied at time t equal to zero. But we see that there is an output being produced before the input has been applied. This is practically not possible. How can a system produce an output before an input has been applied to it? So this is what we mean by non-causal. Uh, causality means that the impulse response h of t should be zero before time t uh, less than t before time t uh, less than zero, right? So the impulse response should be zero for time t uh, less than zero. That is the meaning of causality, and clearly. Uh, the impulse response of the ideal filter, which is a sync function, is having a non-zero value before time t equal to zero. That means there is an output before the input is being applied. And that is physically not possible. So this is what we mean when we say that the impulse response of an ideal filter is non-causal. And systems whose impulse response uh, is not causal cannot be implemented in practice. And that is the reason why, or that is the engineering reason why an ideal filter cannot be implemented in practice. The reason is that the impulse response of an ideal filter is non-causal and hence it cannot be implemented in practice. So that is why we have practical filters which have uh, some transition band. Uh, ideally, we would like to have the transition band to be zero, but that would mean that the impulse response is non-causal. So therefore, most of the practical filters have a non-zero transition bandwidth. And uh, we want to keep the transition band as narrow as possible. The narrower the transition band, the better the filtering characteristics, but that also makes the implementation complexity and cost of the filter also to go high. So that's the uh, trade-off between performance and complexity and cost. So uh, we now have an answer as to why uh, an ideal filter cannot be implemented in practice. The answer is fairly simple. The impulse response of an ideal filter is non-causal and therefore it cannot be implemented in practice.